so full disclosure, Jeff is my cousin. Andrew is my cousin. Yes. Um, Our moms know each other. Yeah. So growing up, you guys were in Boston and we were in New York and we'd come and visit. I think you were already out of the house, either at college or away working or something like that. And doing time. Doing time. And uh, as soon as I could get away from the adults and sneak off, I'd go up to your room because you had boxes and crates and crates of comic books, like full series they and... They still do. They're, they're yeah, still... Yeah, all that. That's why I can't park my car in the garage. So I got introduced through, to your world through that initially and read about it, but why... How did you become so passionate about comics and the world of superheroes? Uh, my mom got divorced at a time when people didn't know what that meant. So it was very confusing. I was 10 years old, and the world turned upside down. My dad didn't live at home anymore. I didn't really understand what was going on. And so my mother thought it was a good idea to take a vacation in Cape Cod. And uh, we rented a house, and up the street was a, literally a general store. And at the general store, there literally was a spinner rack. And uh, I found these comics. And I, in that world, I discovered a place where people had problems, but by the end of the story, they resolved them, and the hero won. And as we always used to say, like Peter Parker would defeat Dr. Octopus, but then not get home in time in order to pay the rent. Uh, and so that, those were the kinds of stories that I fell in love with. I remember you did a couple major wrote a couple of major motion pictures. I graduated, I went to Columbia Film School, uh, left, went to LA, didn't know anybody, uh, and in a relatively short amount of time, wrote a, a little movie called Teen Wolf with Michael J. Fox. And then at the same time wrote another movie which uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger starred in called Commando. Uh, and, uh, and they both came out in 1985 and so, if you were a 15-year-old boy living in the United States in 1985, I'm a god. Uh, because you spent that summer, you started watching Back to the Future, you went to go see Teen Wolf, and then you finished the summer watching Commando, and so two out of three, thank you. And I, and I just thought that's how it was going to be. Like, I'd write a movie and they'd make it. That's, at the beginning, it didn't seem that way. And then there was a long period where it wasn't. Um, but, I, you know, I think you just stay at it. I also really believed in, in zagging when other people were zigging. And so I did animation when no one else was doing animation. And then I moved into television and I got lucky. I met Joss Whedon and, and we did, I worked on Buffy and, uh, and then went from there into Smallville and then into there into lost and into the era of heroes and then I got a call from the people at Marvel that they'd been acquired by Disney and would I run the television division and I knew about as much about running a television division as I do about running a small luxury hotel. I got lucky, I just like to tell stories. Great transition, well done. I think you have become, maybe by accident, maybe on purpose, a, an expert at telling stories and stories are what define brands. How do you see your storytelling skill as defining brands? My dad would tell stories. My dad had a story for everything, largely to explain where he was. And so he would be late to dinner and he would, he would hurry in and he would sit me down and he would say, I, I, I went to this building and it was, I had to deliver these really important documents and I, I just, I got there just in time as they were just about to close, and when I went inside, there were armed guards everywhere, and I, I managed to get past all of them, and on the walls there were rewards for wanted men, dangerous men, men that had committed terrible crimes, and, and I managed to get the, the documents there, and I, I got home, and that's why I was a little late. And he'd gone to the post office. Uh, uh, and my dad was a stockbroker. He was not a storyteller and uh, by trade. Uh, but he could tell stories. And it, it made me understand that the, the best part of life isn't 
just living through the adventure. It's telling somebody about the adventure. And so I think the idea is always to, in terms of lodging, I mean, I haven't really thought about this, uh, but it's to find the story, which is not what you're selling, but the story that the people who leave are going to tell the next person. What is the story you want them to tell? That's how I would define the brand of whatever your hotel is. It's what's the story that you want the customer to tell? Marvel has a real cult following, I think. Well, that's, and it's, yeah, I mean, it's a lifestyle brand now. I mean, it, it's, I, cult, I think, is minimizing. Okay, so how, you didn't create the brand initially, no. but, but you have had a strong hand in promulgating it. So how do you see it moving forward? And you just said it's, a, it's more of a lifestyle. At the end of the day, there's, there's two things that we try to do. We try to tell stories about hope, and we try to tell stories that are aspirational. We tell stories that the best is to start with Iron Man, which is Tony Stark is literally and figuratively a man without a heart. And so they tear out his heart, and they shove him in a cave, and he has to do the one thing he cannot do, and that is he has to learn how to communicate with this other scientist, and out of that communication and out of that ability to transform from being, to be perfectly honest with you, a giant asshole, uh, he comes out of the cave, not because someone came and moved all the rocks out of the way and saved him, but because he comes out as Iron Man, a man who is entirely covered in iron, but then can communicate better with people. And in the same kind of way, Jessica Jones was a story about a woman who drinks and, and is irascible and not anybody would really want to be your friend, but then you find out the story is, is that men have abused her and one man in particular is, is terrible to her and that PTSD is turned into what she is. And so long before people were publicly talking about the Me Too movement and, and should have been, um, we decided to tell a story about that and then the number of women who went, yeah, that's the kind of superhero I want to be. I want to be somebody that can stand up. And at the end of the day, that's truly what Marvel is about, is it's a hero is someone who stands up when everyone is being told to sit down. And that means anyone can be a hero. And uh, you know that's the, that's the joy of Spider-Man. It's anyone can wear the mask. It's, it's about the person who's inside. Uh, and if you, if you believe that helping someone is better than hurting them, then you'll succeed. And that's the story that we tell over and over and over again. And it's amazing that it's a story that people want to hear. And so I think that has a lot to do with the success of it. Who, who's your favorite character and why do you like them so much? The answer that I generally come up with is, is the Hulk, just because it's, it's such an easy thing to understand that inside all of us is this tremendous amount of rage. Uh, and Bruce Banner gets to let it out and, and you know throw a car in the East River when there's a lot of traffic. Uh, and that's really all I've ever wanted to do, is just <laughs> when a guy honks at you to be able to get out of the car and just punch through, grab the engine and just throw it in the East River and just go, have a nice day, get back in my car and drive away. Awesome. Yeah, I have issues. It's great. <laughs> when you're traveling, what gets you excited and what do you value when you go stay at a hotel? My family has come to know that when we get to the room, don't unpack. Like, you got to wait because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change rooms. I just, I'm that guy. Uh, so, uh, and that's just largely based on I, a little bit of spider sense, which is, you know, is this going to work? I love great service. I, I love the people that are at the front desk that are, that are just happy and you know, they're glad to see you and they act as though, I, my favorite thing is to walk into a hotel and they go, welcome back. And I go, I've never been here, but I just love that. I like to stay in a hotel that's nicer than my house and I live in Beverly Hills. So I, I tend to, like quaint doesn't really work for me. I, I know it works for a lot of people, but. I, I tend to sort of go for a place that's schmancy and I like a big room and, and I like, I, I sort of like the excess of a hotel 
which is the idea that like, oh look, we're staying on vacation. So there's like a bathroom here and one here and one over here. Uh, and there's just two of us. Uh, so, I, you know, there's that and room service all the time. Do you, just <laughs> over and over again. I, this was wonderful. I don't know. Are there that, questions? We, we are unfortunately out of time. Yeah, uh, I, there's a little clock thing. Thank you. Awesome, man. Awesome. Very good.